welcome to today's uh, lecture of mixed signal ic design we are discussing uh, data converter specifications and in the previous class we uh, discussed about differential non linearity uh, which is uh, understood as a measure of or how uniformly uh, a dac can generate the analog uh, multiples at the output that is what we discussed about differential non linearity and we also saw how to um how to calculate or how to estimate differential non linearity of a dac right so now <clears throat> so uh, differential non linearity what we have seen is with respect to uh, step height of uh, step height of the analog output uh, whenever there is a input code uh, difference or change now in a similar way in order to uh, define the linearity of the overall transfer curve of the dac so differential non linearity was also uh, Uh, with respect to the dac transfer curve right so we are looking at the transfer characteristics of dac input versus out output versus input characteristics of dac and looking at different uh, non idealities and how do we measure and how do we specify that is what we are discussing so far so in today's class what we'll do is we'll continue that discussion and we'll see what is this integral non linearity which is the which is a measure of linearity of the overall transfer curve of the dac right so coming to this integral non linearity uh, as i mentioned uh, this is or uh, this uh, give you an idea about the uh, the linearity of of the overall transfer curve of the dac this is what uh, inl or integral non linearity basically uh, help us to understand so uh, if you look at the uh, transfer curve of a uh, uh, dac so we know that here we'll have digital input code and this is the point where we have analog output which is usually uh, <coughs> written as not as the Uh, output, but rather we write it as output by VRF with respect. We are uh, normalizing it with with reference to VRF, right? So if you look at the digital input code, which varies from zero 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 to uh, all the uh, if uh, for all for all these things, I am considering example as a three bit DAC. So from all the way from zero 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 to one one one, and we know that for every bit change, there is a there should be the DAC cara should be monotonic, and so for every uh, bit change, there should be a corresponding um change in the analog output right now uh, say we have a few uh, let me just draw this as the uh, <coughs> ideal curve right so assume that this is the uh, curve now if you look at the individual uh, lsb points we know that always it will not be on this uh, always it will not be Uh, having a perfect ideal step height or ideal um, step multiple at the output so maybe i'm uh, referring uh, three points where you can see that uh, these are the 0 1 2 3 4 5 maybe 5 6 and 7 assume that we have seven points over here right <coughs> now generally uh, this ka the in order to measure the non linearity or in order to measure the linearity of the overall transfer curve of the dac there are different ways to estimate this and one such way is uh, we generally connect the first and the last um, output points say for example this is the output point corresponding for 0 and this is the output point corresponding for 7 we first connect a, a line uh, or first we draw a reference line connecting the first and the last um, output lsb uh, output uh, analog output voltage right so this can be treated as a reference line all right now uh, from the reference line uh, which all uh, output points are deviated so say for example Uh, if this is a specific uh, a specific output for a, a specific input you can see that there is a deviation of this much from the reference line what i have drawn right if i again look at this point there is also a difference from the reference line what i have drawn 
here also you can see that there is a difference from the reference line what we have drawn so in order to understand or in, or in order to comment about the overall linearity of a DAC what we do is we call it as integral nonlinear. this is basically the difference between this is basically the difference between uh, the output of the DAC the output of DAC and a reference straight line a reference straight line drawn through the first and the last output values the first and the last output values uh, so what we can summarize is in order to find the uh, integral nonlinearity with respect to a specific input code uh, what we can do is we can find the output value for that specific input code of bit n minus the output value of the reference value at that point specific point reference line at that specific point so this difference will give you integral nonlinearity, right? So, uh, say for example, if this is uh, for a, a input code change uh, for nth, uh, nth output, uh, I can call this as inl of, uh, say, one second. Yeah, if I am referring this as n, so this is inl of n. This difference is inl of n. This difference is inl of n minus 1 and this difference is inl of n n plus 1 and n plus 2 in this case <coughs> are you getting the difference between the output of the DAC and a reference uh, straight line which is drawn through the first and last output values uh, this difference is basically uh, giving you an overall idea about the linearity of the DAC and this is called as integral nonlinearity and this can be uh, obtained uh, for for every uh, a digital input code change we can obtain this from using this formula all right i hope this is clear now um, multiple questions will come in our mind right so here what we are doing is we are keeping reference as this point the first point and the last point this is my reference or i am drawing a reference line connecting the first and last one now the question is um, uh, like what if the first if there is some other error which is not giving you appropriately zero volt at the output there are arguments based on that there are different methods of uh, calculating inl what uh, whatever i have told just now is one such method we will discuss about the other two methods and how it is useful all right so uh, before that let us quickly see how we can uh, calculate or how we can uh, do perform this integral nonlinearity with a simple example all right so look at this question <clears throat> The question is to determine the integral nonlinearity INL for the non ideal 3 bit DAC. And given that uh, the reference voltage is, uh, is 5, the Re reference voltage given is equal to 5, uh, what we need to find is we need to uh, calculate the integral nonlinearity uh, for this specific uh, non ideal 3 bit DAC. Alright, so um, how to start this? You can see that. Uh, you can see the different uh, output points so 1 2 sorry 0 1 2 uh, 3 4 5 6 and 7 all right so all the 7 bits are there so the first step is actually to draw a straight line through the first and last output point so this is the first point this is the last point Connecting these two, draw a straight line. That is the first step we need to do if a transfer curve is given, right? So, uh, if there is a transfer curve available for a specific uh, for a particular DAC, we can connect the first and the last output point, then we can draw a straight line. Now, after drawing the straight line, you will come to know that which are the points which are away from or out from the uh, reference line. So here we can see that there are uh, three uh, for three digital input code the the output values are not falling on the straight line which is drawn with the uh, first and the last point right so in that case what we need to do we need to actually find the inl for that specific case and in this example directly the inl values are given right so what we can do here is i can say that uh, since the inl uh, since the output uh, output is falling one second 
yeah since for this uh, for this one uh, these four since the output is falling exactly on the line uh, we can write that inl for that is equal to 0 so inl for 0 inl for uh, this is 0 1 2 uh, 4 6 and 7 for all these input uh, digital code the inl value is equal to 0 all right now <coughs> Look at the output corresponding to the uh, input code 001, 011, no not 011, 001 is there, yeah yes, 0, 011 and 101. For these three we need to actually find the uh, INL value. So how to find the INL values? We can directly write since the information given is straightforward, I can write INL1. So what is INL1? For the input digital code of 001, the output is not on the straight line, it is above the straight line, right. So as per the formula what we have seen here, the output value for the input code n, so which is the actual value minus the output value which is coming in the reference line. So I can say that in this case your uh, INL for the code INL for 1 is plus 0.5 LSB because this is falling, this is the point is above the reference line. So this can be written as 0.5 LSB. Right. So similarly, you can find the INL value uh, for reference uh, for the input digital code of 3. That also you can see that, uh, that is also from the reference line. So this is the reference line point. From there it is given that the difference is 0.5 LSB which is again positive because the point is above the reference line. Now coming to this, uh, coming to the uh, INL for the input digital code for 5, you can see that now this is the corresponding point in the reference line and the actual value is falling below the, uh, the reference line. So that should be treated as negative or minus 0.5 LSB. Alright. So these are the INL values. So the, the method is very simple. Uh, this is one of, one of the method. The method, uh, the method what we can um, follow is connect the first and the last output points, draw a straight line. And then C for the deviation from the straight line for every input uh, digital code for the uh, yeah for every input code and the difference can be written as plus or minus uh, like corresponding LSB values. If it is above the reference line, it should be positive. It is if it is below the reference line, it is negative because what we are doing is we are looking at the actual value minus the value corresponding in the reference line. That is why we uh, treat it as positive and negative. Right in a similar way. Uh, as we plotted uh, the INL, the DNL curve, uh, if you remember in the, in the, in the previous class, no, we uh, plotted the DNL versus the digital input code. In a similar way, we plot the same thing for uh, INL as well. So this is uh, the INL value and this is the digital input code. So here, this is for 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, then this is for 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, so what is the deviation uh, for rest of rest everything it is zero so for one it is uh, 0 0.5 this is one so this is one it is 0.5 less b again come back to it is zero uh, three also it is 0.5 less b four it is again zero 5 it is minus 0.75 LSB so it will come down here say this is marked as minus 0.575 LSB and then rest everything is 0. The whole idea of uh, yeah so and I am just coming to that point the whole idea of uh, writing uh, about this uh, whole idea of representing this INL is to see that uh, what is the maximum INL value which is coming in and uh, as we mentioned before, as we suggested before, it is considered as the maximum INL value can be plus or minus 0.5 LSB. 
that is how generally we consider uh, a DAC as an n-bit accurate DAC. If the DAC is n-bit accurate, the maximum INL route it can consider is only plus or minus 0.5 LSD. Otherwise, the DAC is not n-bit accurate, right? Now, so basically what is the difference between differential nonlinearity and integral nonlinearity? So what we have done in the case of differential nonlinearity is we were actually looking at the uh, individual step height here, right? So for every uh, input digital code word, uh, what is the actual height and what is the height which we have. So diff um, when you talk about differential nonlinearity, we are actually uh, looking at the differential nonlinearity for the for um, what to say for individual uh, input digital code transition and how much is the difference. So it is uh, we can say that it is locally telling about the nonlinearity with respect to every input code. Now in the case of integral nonlinearity, even though we are measuring in this form, INL value will actually give you a overall idea about the nonlinear or in other terms I can say that uh, summation of all the uh, differential nonlinearity will actually give you the integral nonlinearity value for the entire DAC that is how we can differentiate so INL is for the overall uh, INL talks about the overall transfer curve but DNL is for every input digital code word what is the difference all right that is why so here the difference is INL we are actually uh, keeping a reference line and that reference line uh, and the deviation from the reference line is actually giving you the overall nonlinearity of the uh, DAC. In simple terms, this is how uh, the difference between INL and DNL is. Um, is it clear? Yeah, so one is local, uh, we can say it is localized in the sense for every input digital code word and the other one is uh, the overall idea. All right, yeah. <coughs> uh, so this is how we, so uh, the calculation of INL becomes easy when we, uh, when we have a uh, graph, the graphical representation, otherwise we need to calculate. We will see one example from the tutorial also. So before that we will quickly uh, look at some other uh, methods of uh, INL calculation. Uh, so, <clears throat> just now what we have um, uh, told is about the, um, after drawing a reference line, we will be actually measuring it, right. So, now in, in this method, in the method what we have um, suggested now, what it is doing is, it is basically comparing the output values to the ideal reference line, right. And now, the ideal reference line is drawn uh, by connecting the digital output for the, uh, sorry, the analog output values for the first and the last, right. So, uh, this method is uh, done regardless of the positions of the first and last output values. We are not we are actually checking whether the first and the last output values are the actual values or whether some other error is associated with those output values, we are not actually uh, doing it. So without checking that, we are actually drawing a reference line and measuring the integral nonlinearity, right? So now the question is, um, if the DAC has an offset voltage or a gain error, so we will see what, what is this offset error and gain error but offset error is basically when your input is 0 output also should be equal to 0 but now uh, now if the output is not equal to 0 what will happen uh, the first output value will be wrong right now if I measure uh, INL based on the based on drawing a reference line connecting the first and output values with offset error then we are actually including that error also in the INL determination right. So even though this is one of the popular method, but this this INL determination is, um, or in some or the other way, it, it includes the uh, offset error as well, right? So uh, in order, so this is one method. What we have uh, discussed now is one method. Another method is called as best fit method or best fit curve method. So what it does is, uh, in order to minimize the INL values, what we are measuring. Uh, what we what we generally do is so when you have the output values of a, a DAC we will try to construct the reference line not just by connecting the first and the output uh, the first and the last output values um, in this method what it does is it is done by uh, connecting the reference line uh, so that it will pass as closely as possible to majority of the output values right so if you have uh, values like this we will try to draw a line not just by connecting the first and the last output line rather we will try to draw a line so that every point uh, for um, for for every output value this line will be as close as possible right so now by doing that 
um, it, it is not like that we are minimizing INL error because INL error will be there definitely. Uh, it is actually a what we can say it's a subjective method where you no, know, um, we are drawing a line which is very close to the point so that we can actually tell that the INL is minimum, right? Even though it is not accounting or even though it is not reducing the actual INL, right? So uh, the the method, the popular method, what we generally do for INL calculation is by drawing the reference line. And now the question comes, uh, what what if there is a uh, gain error or an offset error? Then generally when we design a DAC or ADC, we have you know, offset correction techniques. We need to apply offset correction techniques. We need to uh, correct such gain error so that INL calculation also will be appropriate or will be proper. All right. I hope uh, that, that part is clear. Uh, apart from this also, there are several other techniques to measure this INL and DNL for a DAC. So these are two uh, popular techniques what we can uh, discuss over here. Alright, so I am quickly moving to uh, some other static specifications. So one is as I mentioned now, uh, this is offset error. So uh, offset error is as uh, simple as the term uh, because the analog output uh, for any for a digital code of 0 should be equal to 0. right? When, you're in, when there is no ch um, change at the input digital uh, word, output also should be zero. But uh, if an uh, but an offset exists if the analog output voltage is not equal to zero. That means for uh, digital input zero, output should be equal to zero. If the output is not equal to zero, we can say that there is an offset error. That can be due to the different non-ideal disks present in the different components of the circuit, right? So uh, how, how, how will it be reflected in the uh, overall transfer curve? Look at this transfer curve. You can uh, notice that. All right. So <coughs> for zero, for the uh, for analog, um, so for the digital input zero, output should be zero. And it should start from here. But because of this offset error, you can see that this much is the offset error. Because of the offset error, the entire uh, curve or the, uh, the dark transfer curve is actually shifted by a, by that specific offset right so this is what uh, the offset uh, in, in the presence of offset error this is how the output of the or the transfer curve of a dark will look like right so there are methods to correct this offset uh, we will not be discussing that in detail in our course but there are definitely various methods to uh, cancel this offsets all right so this is how a uh, um, this is what an offset error is. Whenever input is equal to zero, output should be equal to zero. If the output is not equal to zero, that is considered as an offset, right? Uh, similarly, there is one more uh, error what we talk about is called as gain error, right? <coughs> so gain error, uh, maybe we can uh, refer to this. So gain error is basically, uh, by looking at the transfer curve of a DAC, we can say that a gain error exists if uh, the slope of the the slope of the best fit line through the transfer curve is different from the slope of the best fit line for the ideal case, right? So, uh, so the ideal case or the uh, the ideal slope, you can see that I, I have drawn an ideal slope here. Now, from that ideal slope, if there is a shift in the actual slope, uh, we can say that there is a gain error. So, basically. Uh, we know right so when you draw input and output here input versus output the slope of this line will be gain right now if the slope changes we can say that the gain also changes right so now if, if this is the actual this is the ideal uh, output line what we are expecting for every input code word based on the um, ideal step height uh, we know what should be the slope of a DAC now if there is a change in the slope change in the slope can happen if there is a shift towards this side or a shift towards this side right so there is a shift from uh, this side or this side that will lead to gain error and again there are uh, me mechanisms um, if you remember in the first uh, in the first unit we mentioned about a sample and hold circuit which will result in uh, because of the charge injection and the other things we uh, we mentioned about gain error similarly there are other things which contributes for gain error in a DAC and uh, this can be identified and there are uh, mechanisms actually to correct it all right so these are the other uh, two common uh, specifications of a DAC there are n number of other specifications as well all right now I am uh, yeah now another one um, specification is called as latency so uh, latency that this specification is basically defined as the total time uh, from the moment that the input digital word changes 
to the time the uh, analog output value has settled to within a specified tolerance so this is how a latency is defined right so basically when there is a change in the input there should be a change at, there will be a change at the output so how much time it is taken uh, from the input digital word change till output reflects that change right so that uh, that time is considered as latency now latency is um, we can say that latency is the settling time plus an additional time no, which requires for this change it is not latency is not exactly settling time settling time plus this additional time what is required uh, which required for the change to happen at the output right when there is a change at the input that is considered as latency latency is also considered as one of the important specification because uh, all these things you know one way or other way it is related to the speed of an ABC now yeah so that's all about uh, static it is not all about sp uh, static specification these are some of the static specifications what we have now coming to dynamic specifications we'll discuss two specifications right now and after discussing ADC we'll uh, in, in ADC we'll discuss a little more specifications the dynamic one so one is signal to noise ratio uh, signal to noise ratio is a very common specifications what we, a specification what we talk uh, with respect to a uh, lot of electronic circuits right so, um, as the basic definition says, it is the ratio of signal power to the noise power at the analog output. So, what is the noise power at the analog output? So, we know for a specific input digital code, this should be the output, right? So, if there is a change, that, that will definitely result in some kind of error. And this is more prominent or this can be viewed in a more prominent way in the case of ADCs. We call it as quantization error also there. There, this is defined as signal to quantization noise ratio. Uh, so generally signal power to noise power this ratio is called as signal to noise ratio and uh, the SNR can actually give you the exact resolution of a data converter in the terms of um, there is another measure we call it as ENO effective number of bits right so SNR can reveal the true resolution of a data converter now uh, coming to the other dynamic specification uh, which is called as dynamic range so dynamic range is in general uh, what how, how we define for even other circuits no uh, what is the maximum output signal coming and what is this uh, minimum output signal what a circuit can give you so this ratio or this range is defined as dynamic range so it can be defined as a ratio of the largest output signal over the smallest output signal right um, for both DAC and ADC this quantity this dynamic range DR is again uh, connected with the resolution all right and now the general formula what we use is for an n bit DAC the maximum output what it can produce is to the power of n minus 1 right because um, the maximum output in the case of DAC is the full scale voltage full scale voltage is the maximum output. what is full scale voltage are you guys with me can I get some response all right so the maximum output for a DAC is full scale voltage right what is full scale voltage full scale voltage is reference voltage minus 1 LSB that's it, that is maximum. What is minimum value? Minimum value is 1 LSB again. So this difference will give you uh, the dynamic range, right? So, so in decibels, dynamic range is actually expressed as, so dynamic range can be expressed as this. Is 20 log, the maximum output is 2 to the power of N minus 1 into LSB and the minimum is 1 LSB right full scale voltage divided by 1 LSB or this can be written as 20 log of 2 to the power of n minus 1 or this is further written as 6.02 n decibels 6.02 n decibels yeah Durkesh um, there are uh, there are different mechanisms there are different circuits available to uh, reduce offset so um, we are not we are not discussing it right now uh, i can actually uh, provide some materials because uh, current right now i will not be discussing that uh, maybe when we discuss about the architectures of dac and adc i can mention a uh, few of the offset uh, cancellation techniques or offset correction methods there are different methods that are available yeah all right so this is uh, about dynamic range of uh, a data converter basically a DAC in 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 this current context right 
so these are some of the uh, specifications some of the starting and dynamic specifications of um, uh, DAC ADC specifications we will uh, discuss little later uh, so now based on this we'll uh, try to solve few